Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I'd like to talk about my favorite plugin for PFSense, and that's PF Blocker. This is one that gets installed pretty much all the time whenever we're setting up a new PFSense. They released a new 3.0 version. Well, there's a few more minor changes coming, but we'll get to that in a second. But now that it's in the 3.0, I wanted to do a video kind of going over, well, how much easier it is to set up. The defaults work much better and the wizard works great. So this is the latest video on this particular topic, the 3.0 series, and it is the latest version as of December 10th, 2020. One thing I want to get out of the way though, this developer, BBCan177, has a Patreon page. There are currently 175 people, including myself, donating to this particular project. If you can afford a few extra dollars to throw at this project, that would be greatly appreciated by the developer. The project, you know, is a lot of time and a lot of effort put in by BBCan for this plugin and add-on for PFSense. So if you can donate, I just like to bring this up that it'd be greatly appreciated by BBCan177. If you can't donate and just want to use a product, don't worry, it's still free and no problem, go ahead and use it, it is great. I really do recommend it, which is why I'm doing this video. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's first if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. Now there is a subreddit dedicated to PF Blocker NG, and that's where the full announcement with a whole lot of details for all the report tabs and all the fun things that were fixed in here or updated or refactored. There's a lot of code changes behind the scenes, not a massive change to the front end of it, but we'll get to the wizard in a second and how much better it works. But here's all the list of changes and I'll leave links to this down below. And of course, if you have a lot of questions and Q and A, they're probably already answered down here in this already done Reddit post. So read through this if you have a lot of Q and A on some finite detail I may not cover in here. Also, only about an hour ago, actually it says uh, updated 19 minutes ago, was this post right here, PF Blocker Devil 3.0.0 underscore five update. And there's a couple more minor changes coming. Now these are not available at this very moment, at least for the time I'm making the video, but probably by the time you're watching this, because this will probably be completed within a week, that this will be added to PF Blocker. And one of the things that is important to know in the improvement for the threat lookups. Uh, there's another Reddit post about this. I'll get to the threat lookups when we're at that part of the video, but I do know some of them are non-functional because, well, some of those sites don't support the threat lookup anymore. So that has been pruned and that's part of what this poll update is for as well. And uh, no problem if you run the wizard now before this update and it'll fix itself later. Once you've set this up, the updates don't seem to have any effect on it. I set this up when it very first came out and now I've seen several updates. Now let's get into actually setting this up and installing it. First thing that's important to know, and this is the version right here, PF Blocker Devil 3.0.0 underscore three. Now I bring this up because if you go to the available packages under the package manager in PF Sense and we type in PF Block, there is a two series. And this was a common thing I seen on one of my last videos where people loaded the wrong version. You wanna load the three series, not the two series. And I think in my other video, there's an older version and you kind of get the idea. There's usually two versions listed in there, the old train and the new uh, development package. So that's the one we wanna start with here. Then from there, the next thing you wanna do is kick off the wizard. Now, if you have already installed this, there's not a wizard that will come up. It'll just have all your settings. The settings will transfer even if you're upgrading from the 2.0 to the 3.0 series and went through the normal double updates. It will automatically pull the settings over, but it does not prune broken feeds. Not the threat lookup, but the actual feeds. And you may want to consider just resetting this up if you've, one, goof things up. Two, not sure what you did and changed a bunch of settings, can't remember what they were, and you're not sure what's broken, you don't want to take the time to troubleshoot it. And I've actually done that myself where it's quicker just to reconfigure this. And one of the nice things about PF Blocker 3, the wizard just works so well. Let me walk you through how easy this is to set up. 
So we're gonna hit next. And by the way, you can also rerun the wizard um, by clicking the wizard tab after it's already configured. You just go here, click wizard, and you can re-blow away all the settings and set it back up again. I, I encourage people to do this. Like I said, if you goof things up and you're not remembering what you did or what you changed, just rerun the wizard. It erases all the settings. It will now configure all the defaults set up for PF Blocker NG. This default configuration is for an entry level setup, which is designed to assist beginners with PF Blocker. By the way, the entry level is kind of understating it. The entry level works really, really well. It's probably adequate for the majority of users, especially home users. Now, next, the next thing we want to do is figure out which is our outside interfaces. WAN is the only interface on my demo machine, but if you have more than one WAN interface because you have failover, you'll choose each one of those that you have public facing. Then we have our internal interfaces, LAN and LAN2. They call them outbound interfaces, but they're the internal interfaces that you want to apply these rules to. Next, VIP address port and SSL port. This is for the DNS sinkhole, and what you don't want is a conflict. So my network is built on the 192 subnets, therefore the address conflicts won't be there. If you are using 10.10.1 for something already, you're gonna have an address conflict, and this is your opportunity to change that. It's the same thing with ports. If you have something on port 81, 8081 and 8443, for example, if you had moved PFSense to that port, you are going to have uh, trouble, and this is why they give you the option to reassign these. I'm not using either one of these ports. I've actually got PFSense on 5555, if you look up at the top over here. So yeah, no conflicts, next. Finish. All right, next thing it's going to do is reload and grab all the rules and download everything and uh, pull all the updates. So we'll let this complete real quick. PF Blocker has been successfully configured and updated. And for some people, this is as far as you need to go in the video. It is set up, it is configured. It is at the base config, but don't worry, that actually works really well. And I'm gonna keep going on about customizing and what the details mean for more advanced setups, but you can stop watching here if this is all you wanna do is get it activated, get it basically working. That's, you know, as far as you need to go. This is the nice default setup that works. Now let's start diving into the settings here. General. One thing we have is the general tab where we have keep settings, PF blocker, and G enable. This is pretty basic, and by default, it wants to update every hour. Speaking of updates, each time it updates, which it's going to update again at 9, it already made the entry for it, so we got six minutes time remaining. One thing that's important to understand, and I'll reference this, the changes you make in PF blocker and we're gonna go make a change real quick, but without doing this reload, those changes won't be applied as firewall rules until this runs. This is what the forced reload option is. And we can say, do we make a change to the IP settings, the DNS BL settings, DNS blacklisting? It's whichever change you make or both, you have to rerun this for those changes to apply. And let's walk through at least one common change that I do. So I usually leave all of this at default, which is perfectly fine, but then I go down here and we have WAN and LAN and LAN2, and we're gonna enable floating rules and we're gonna enable kill states. Now, floating rules is a function inside of PFSense where you can apply rules floating as in not specific to any interface. I like the rules having the being over there because if they're over there, well, they're all in one place instead of having individual rules under each interface. Kill states means if there's a new update that comes through, a new IP address added to the block list, do you want to kill any states that are found connections between a device behind the firewall and that particular, or the firewall itself, and that particular IP address? If you don't have this and the rule is added where another IP address that you were using or a connection was being used, it will remain in use, but it won't be able to start new states and new connections, but the old connections will exist. Kill states is a way of dropping those connections upon firewall rule reload. So we're gonna save IP settings, and we're gonna go here to firewall, go to rules, and right here is the block rule that was in place. And here's the block rule under LAN2, and here's the floating rules, and you notice they're not there. No problem, firewall, PF blocker NG, update, we're just gonna reload the rules. I only need to reload the IP rules because that's the only thing we changed. Hit run. It runs through very quickly because it doesn't have to do much. Goes through, already has a download. I didn't need it to download anything again. Then we go here, firewall, rules, floating. Hey, there's the floating rule, LAN and LAN two. 
There's no more rules in here. This is why I like it in floating. This is also a big confusing part of when people make changes and can't figure out where, why those changes weren't working or started working later. That's because you have to reload it each time to get the changes to apply. All right, now that we know that, let's dive into the IP blocking. One more thing that you may have noticed in here is MaxBind now requires a license key. This did not require it before, and there was some controversy with just giving away a free GeoIP database. So if you need to use the GeoIP functions, then you will need to put a license key in here and uh, let the hangry comments go down below. I'll leave a video link to the previous video I did on this. People really seem upset that this company doesn't give away a automatically free without registering an email address license to a GeoIP database. I'm not here to solve that controversy. I'm just telling you that you do have to register and uh, acknowledge the email address. Uh, you can't just give them a fake one and get the license key set up. This is an FYI on there. And that's only if you're gonna use the GeoIP. We're gonna get into what that looks like. Now let's go to, now that that's the only other change on here, IPv4. And by default, we are only denying outbound. Now that's actually fine for the majority of users, especially home users who may not be hosting anything on PFSense, as in you don't have any ports open. Because by default, the WAN always denies everything coming at it. So denying more doesn't help you in any way. Now you can tell it to deny inbound as well or deny both, and it will then log more of it just so you're curious who's banging at the WAN address of your particular firewall. And don't take that personally because, well, you'll find that there's a whole lot of attacks going on. It's not necessarily that they're targeting you as an individual personally. Maybe they are, but seems unlikely. More likely, it is just these automated bots that send out massive amounts of scan looking and knocking on doors looking for, well, unlocked ports or vulnerable systems. And it's a very automated scan. And there's even companies that are just aggregating data. So that's a show, Dan. You'll see them show up in the logs as well. So you don't necessarily need it, but you can turn it on. It's not really a big security change if you're not hosting anything. If you are, if you're a business and you want that turned on, then yes, then that does help because, well, it'll delist all these things in there. And as I stated, for any change, you would have to go back and do the reload. Now let's look at what the default list it has on here. And here's what the rules look like. Now you can add your own custom rules. They do have more feeds and I'll show you how to add to these feeds, but they're pretty straightforward. Go here, copy that, paste it. And this is what the rule actually looks like. Not too many IP addresses in this one. Well, actually there's kind of a lot. They're just insider notation. So they're blocks completely delisted. And these are ones that for whatever reason, uh, Spam House decided are on their drop list. And this one seems to get a lot of popularity in terms of hits. This is a pretty long list too. Now the system actually goes through and deduplicates these. So if something on this particular list was also on another list, it will go through and try to aggregate this to reserve memory. This is actually some of the code rating that's been uh, updated to make this a more efficient process because even though you're pulling from multiple blacklists, there may be differing opinions they have, but there's a lot of the same opinions they have of which IP addresses should be on this particular list. And I think this default list works really well. Let's go ahead though and talk about what if you wanted to add one. And we're gonna go here and uh, we'll click on Alien Vault. And if you wanna add one, click the plus, change the state to on, and then it will add this one to the list. Now, interesting, this one's actually Alien Vault, but they're just says, called reputation snort.gz. So apparently it's probably part of a snort list. It is gzip compressed. And interestingly, it will handle gzip compressed files and then it uncompresses them. It's a more efficient way to transport, of course. And now this list can be added. Now, how does that actually work in terms of adding it? Go over here, make sure this is state on. As you notice, it was defaulted off. We just hit save. And now if we go to the list, same answers, I maybe want to deny both and hit save, hit okay. Now these lists are top down, so it works like other firewall rules inside of PFSense. So you can drag these around if you wanted this one to be matched first or matched second. Um, it's kind of just a personal preference, however you want to do that. You can also on a per list basis, change the frequency. Maybe this one you only want it updated every four hours and hit save. Now, once again, you'd have to go here, go to the update. This time, because we changed the list, we wouldn't just do a reload because we're not just changing rules. We have to make sure it pulls. So we'd run this and actually pull that particular list. And when you look back through the logs, you can see Alien Vault downloading update 
but these ones existed because there was no changes. The system's also smart and you see is, hey, there's no changes to these lists, there's really nothing to do. They hash them and go, hey, do they match? Yes, this list is unchanged and well, nothing really happens. But now we did change the Alien Vault one, so that one's been downloaded. Now let's dive a little further over here and look at GOIP. Now, I don't feel like putting a license in this particular one, but we're gonna jump over to my system and show you what the GOIP actually looks like once you pull it. So here's the GOIP, and one important thing is, one, you gotta put a MaxMine license key. Second, you have to do an update. Third, you have to go here and edit these. If you don't edit them, they default to disabled. Then not just enabling them doesn't exactly turn it on. So it's not like we're just blanket doing, well, Antarctica, Asia, or those IP addresses. You actually have to edit each one. And by default, none of these are selected. You have to do a control A or granularly go through each one of these country codes and decide which groupings that you want to block or not block. And they can be select holding the control and pick very specific ones. Then you have to go down and hit save. Once you're in here, you can go to each individual section. There's more IP addresses than I expected in Antarctica. <laughs> and, uh, but either way, if you didn't want to block the penguins in Antarctica, you could select which one of these is okay not to block. I don't know how many attacks actually come from there. That could be interesting. Anyways, not to get off topic. Once you've done all this and done all these saves and configured the country blocking and features, then you can go back over and we'll look at the GOIP list here. Make sure this is saved. Make sure all these are set up the way you want. Then do the reload. Of note, you notice how I am set up to deny inbound, but not to deny outbound. Home users, please don't deny outbound. This is a common, well, sometimes people want to call us for support and we look and find that they can't get to a lot of websites because they decided to deny everything thinking that would make it safer. You're literally blocking entire countries. You will be surprised sometimes how many websites you visit that are maybe not hosted in the country you thought they were or just where those servers are going to serve up the content from through the content delivery networks. So if you start blocking everything outbound, you're going to have a bad time. The deny inbound is because we host things and well, we don't really have customers that need to touch our servers that we have things hosted on that are inside the U.S. from outside the U.S. So we choose tonight inbound and then granularly edit these kind of on an as needed if we have a client in those particular places. Just an FYI of how that works. And it's important though, because if you start really tuning this past where I said, now you've got this basically set up home users and default users, um, this is where people get themselves into trouble. And sometimes if you goof this up beyond recognition, click the wizard and start over. Now, while we're into my system, I'll take a look at the reports because the demo system is behind another firewall, which means the reports are well, empty. And when you go to the reports page and then the alerts page, here are some of the denies and I've blurred out some of my public IP address blocks that we have here attached to my PFSense. Of note though, if you wanted to whitelist something, it's actually pretty easy. You can just click the little plus hit OK, and it has the ability to create whitelist aliases. This is a way you can create the rules and create a separate whitelist to allow something. And when you do this, it's going to create a whitelist right under the IP list over here. And then you can put these IP lists above mentioned that it's top down. And instead of a deny rule, you can say a permit. That way it'll process those IP addresses that you have in a custom whitelist because for some reason there are false positives that are on there. This is some of the fine tuning that is pretty easy to do inside of here. Now, the other enhancement to the reports is go here and we'll just look at the block stats real quick. They offer a lot of tuning that you can pull these report information, fine tune what you do want. These are actually not more to add, this is invert. So you can actually remove some of these things if I didn't want the event timeline, for example. So select things to hide, that's what this is for. I'm gonna not select any of those. It gives you some stats over time. And I won't scroll down too far as I got to blur too many of the IP addresses, but it will get really nice reports that are for understanding, you know, where some of these attacks came from, what's the count, what's the GOIP location from that IP address. And uh, tons of them come from the US. I'm not going to lie. Some of these uh, things are just blocked that are, end up being US pretty frequently. So just because you block the other countries, don't think that's any substitute for not locking things down and being secure. All right, let me go ahead and close this. So that's the GOIP. Pretty straightforward. Now we can go over here to DNSBL, the blacklist. I'm fine with the default function of this. I actually sometimes turn it down a bit. So here is the 
groups that it adds. We have the easy list, the ads collection, and we have the malicious. The problem is, this is, for example, the easy list. And these list formats you can find and spend some time in the subreddit because there are plenty of discussions about which is the best list and it's not for me to decide, it's for you to decide. And these are common lists that are, well, not just specific at all to PF Blocker, they're common lists of things you may want to block. You will also uh, get yourself in a headache of, I wanted to block everything, but every time I block everything, all these different things stop working that I need to use. Yes, that is a challenge. Um, it's one of the reasons I actually at our office, we don't have these on and I'm a big fan of like uBlock Origin in the browser to solve some of those problems because it's way easier to just unblock certain pages because the functionality page you have a use for. So you can start by turning it all on and setting these sync calls up and then you can start working your way back to whether or not these lists are right for you or if they end up being too aggressive and causing, well, too much drama for you for all the sites they try to block. And we'll go over here to the reports, DNS block stats. My laptop is behind this demo firewall that we're working on. As you can see, I'm logged in as a 192. And uh, yep, here is my computer hitting these different uh, sites. And yeah, it's blocking quite a bit. I already know one of the challenges I've had with it is uh, it's blocks almost too much and then things stop working. Like I had said, it can be, it can be a fine tuning headache. Um, people really wanna block everything on the internet that isn't exactly what they want, but you'll find a lot of websites, especially new sites now, if they catch you blocking some of this, well, they're gonna tell you that, yeah, you can't block this or we won't show you the page. I'll let you work on that. Um, I'm just throwing it out there. It's pretty easy if you don't wanna turn these on or off, you go here and you can just disable them on an as needed basis, maybe leave the malicious one or find any other feeds that make you happy. Finally, I will get to the report, the alerts and the threat lookup. So let's click on that. And as I stated at the beginning, we know there's a couple of them broken in here. So in a few days, maybe a week from uh, December 10th, when I'm recording this video, there will be some more updates to this to solve this issue. But right here, we can look at um, a 40 yard and a virus total. And what this did was we, took an IP and I artificially created this by just going through and finding an IP. It's actually scan95securityipip.net and we'll see if this is really a bad list or not. So go here, we clicked on a little lookup that brought us to here and from here, it just sends us to each one of the pages with the lookup. Web filter lookup, not rated in 40 OS. Virus total uh, has Alien Vault listing it as malicious and CINS Army, which is actually where I pulled the list from, has it as malicious. Let's actually do a look up here because it came from IPIP.net. What is IPIP.net? Let's make our own assessment here. The only IP database based on real-time BGP ASN data analytics. They're a data analytics company, clearly. And being a data analytics company, they know my location right here and have my IP address, uh, and my longitude latitude, and they assume I'm in the Detroit time zone. I wonder if they're correct on the longitude latitude. I'm just gonna say they're really far off on longitude and latitude. I am uh, south of Detroit down here. They think I'm up here. So we're gonna go with uh, maybe not the most accurate database, but we know that they're just a collection and aggregator. So maybe we wanna whitelist that. And that's what I wanted to talk about specifically. Do your assessments, use the threat lookup, and then you can say, all right, I guess that IP is something I need. Uh, it's a false positive and I want it added to my whitelist. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna click okay. And we want to whitelist. We're gonna create a new whitelist. We're gonna give it a description. Pretty simple. It's added right here. And uh, yeah, test whitelist, we could say YouTube. Good description, why did I add this? Hit save, go here. And we'd probably wanna put this at the top. There we go. Save and order change. So now we have a permit outbound whitelist and then we'll start denying the other ones on there. This is how you can edit those. You can add more to it. And if we wanted to you know, go through, actually, if you go back even to the uh, reports, alerts, it tells you where this is uh, whitelisted and we can also delete this out of the whitelist. So it's now still matching in there. Matter of fact, as long as we have the matching set up inside there, it'll keep showing up in a report and we can 
remove those from a wait list if we later want to, and it'll go ahead and update that. And this is where that kill state thing can be important because let's say you want to remove something and there's a bunch of connections to it and you had it in that list. Uh, this is where kill states, when you reload it, would actually kill any sessions that are going to that particular address. Now that covered how to unblock an IP address from the IP blocking. What about the DNS blocking? Well, let's go here. The same thing, just a little further down in the reports. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and whitelist, yes. Removed, CNAME, domain, ad service on there. Now it's been removed, so now it's got a little mark through it. And once again, we can go here, to exist right here. You can kind of look back at it and then remove it again if you want. And if you want to see where that was added, you go here to the DNSPL, scroll down. There's the whitelist, scroll down. There's all the ones and then the ones that we have in here uh, that were just added says allow Google services. There's a few other that are default in there because if you don't, well, there are a lot of false positives. If you block it, dot apple source forge and then a handful of these other ones like amazon uh you're gonna have a hard time dealing with a few things because a lot of the internet runs on those services so wildcard blocking all of that and dropbox you can take these out you can edit this this is the way the default works but do it your own risk and at your own peril if you turn off the internet or large sections of it the well large section of the internet will be unaccessible to you just want to throw that out there um, if you really want to be secure turn off the internet completely <laughs> that's the best and most honest answer i can give so hopefully this is helpful for getting started and understanding a little bit of the tuning for PF Blocker, it's a great plugin, it's solid. I, like I said in the beginning, if you can throw a few dollars and be a Patreon supporter to support further development of this, and if you wanna have a more in-depth discussion about it, you, my forums are okay, but actually the Reddit is going to be a really great place to have a conversation and talk about the latest developments of it and uh, have a long debate about which lists are the best. Sometimes that pops up from time to time in there. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.